Hello, I'm Professor John Preston. I'm the head of the Civil Maritime and Environmental Engineering and Science Academic Unit. Uh, but what I'm talking about today is some of my teaching. And I teach mainly, but not exclusively, on our master's course for transportation planning and engineering, a course that attracts a wide number of overseas students. So what I want to talk about uh, today is particularly for the benefit of overseas students, but maybe more general, about how I see uh, an essay uh, taking form. And perhaps the first thing to say is there isn't a definitive way to do an essay. So this is just some advice from one tutor. And you may well get uh, other advice which will be equally valid. But I want I think is useful about an essay is you need to think about an essay, first of all, of it's a story. It's a story that needs to be substantiated by evidence, typically evidence from the academic literature. And the academic literature means books and journal papers and not just the top ten things you find in Google. The other thing you need to think about an essay is an essay is a story. Now all stories have a beginning, a middle and an end. And therefore, that should be your, your structure. Your beginning is going to be your introduction. Your middle is going to be your analysis. That may come in a number of sections. And then your end is going to be your conclusions. Sometimes people say that what you need to do in an essay is you need to tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Now, you mustn't overdo the repetition, but that structure can sometimes work. So, how do you go about an essay in uh, uh, general terms? And then, um, then what I'll try and do is illustrate this with, it, with respect to a specific essay title and see whether that works. So, in the introduction, what I think you need to do in an introduction is provide the appropriate context. So you need to provide the context around the question. You need also to define relevant terms. But don't overdo that. But if there are some terms that could be unclear and need definition, then do so. And most importantly, you need to outline the structure. Tell the reader who's going to mark your work what to expect, what's going to come up. So that's to tell them what you're going to tell them. Then your main section is the uh, analysis. Now there are lots of different ways to do this uh, but one approach that can work, doesn't always work but can work, is to structure your analysis like this. First of all you have a thesis. The thesis is a series of arguments in favour of a particular point. Then you develop an antithesis. These are the arguments against that point and then you have a synthesis why you try and weigh up the balance of the arguments and come to your own conclusions. And then you will also, after your analytical parts, you will then have conclusions which really summarise your very briefly your main parts from the essay. Uh, so in your analysis you're telling them and in your conclusions you're telling them what you told them. That may sound a bit strange in its generality, so let's see if we can take an essay title and think about that essay title and start breaking it down to get a structure. So the essay title I'm going to use is a variation of one I've used for a number of years now relating to bus deregulation. So the title is, for local bus services, what are the appropriate levels of regulation and the appropriate forms of competition and ownership? Justify your answer with reference to theoretical and practical evidence, both from Great Britain and elsewhere. So there's a fairly complicated essay title. Now perhaps another thing we should say about dealing with an essay is good planning is very important and you should do your planning before you even start your reading because once you've got an essay plan you know what kind of material you're looking for and what reading you should do to 
uh, put flesh to detail that plan. But with respect to this essay title, it's actually quite a, a lot is being asked because it's actually asking you about three aspects of local bus services. It's asking you about regulation, what are the appropriate levels of reg regulation, and it's asking you about competition and ownership. What are the importance, what are the appropriate forms of uh, competition and ownership? So there's at least three things that you need to talk about in your essay. But there's also a guiding sentence afterwards. Justify your answers with reference to theoretical and practical evidence, both from Great Britain and elsewhere. Well, that's actually asking you for at least three types of evidence. It's asking you for theoretical evidence, it's asking you for practical evidence from Great Britain, and it's asking you for practical evidence from elsewhere. So there's three elements, three types of evidence, Three by three, there are nine things actually that you need to get into your analysis, if you can. So how would we go about this? Well, what I would then do, given that structure, is I would, in my introduction, say, give some background. And so the relevant background would be, for example, in the United Kingdom, buses were deregulated in the, by the 1985 Transport Act. And that's quite a complex piece of legislation. And I would explain the different elements of that legislation. I would also mention that the bus services, there have been experiments with deregulation in countries elsewhere, countries like Chile and New Zealand. But I would also note that that worldwide experience has been quite limited. And that may be informative of itself. Then I would also say that I'm going to structure my analysis parts, the main section of the essay, in three parts. I'm going to look at, in turn, regulation, competition, and ownership. And then I would move on to my analytical sections, and my first analytical section would be regulation. Now, I might say here there are actually different types of regulation. You can regulate the price of a bus service, you can regulate the quantity, how much a bus company produces of bus services, the number of services, its routes, etc. You can regulate the quality. In particular, uh, that could also uh, include safety, but it also could include uh, aspects related to competitive practice. And you can also regulate the profits or the rates of returns that uh, uh, bus companies make. Now, bus deregulation was mainly about getting rid of quantity regulation, and perhaps that's a point that could be made. So when we think about regulation, the thesis at the time of uh, deregulation that regulatory failure was inevitable, and it was inevitable that it was believed by theorists for a number of reasons, that the regulator was always captured by the industry. And therefore, uh, this process of regulatory capture meant that the regulatory system ended up working in, to the advantage of uh, the regulated firms rather than consumers. And one of the reasons this happens is because of a concept called information asymmetries. The individual firms know more about the marketplace than the regulator and always one step ahead. And there's also a problem some observers think of regulatory creep. Regulation starts off doing what it should do, but it starts overextending itself and regulating too much of a particular industrial activity. And there is evidence from Great Britain and elsewhere of all of these features. The antithesis, the counter argument, is that regulation is needed due to market failures and that the British bus industry exhibited market failures in the uh, 1920s and regulation was needed to protect uh, the public interest. So you weigh some of these arguments up and then you could come to a synthesis there. And I think you know, the synthesis may say that although in theory uh, a deregulated market may be 
uh, preferable to a regulated market. The practice in the local bus industry is quite often you get market concentration and these dominant firms will need some form of regulation. And then the question is what type of regulation? So that was the first part of the analytical uh, section. The second part would look at competition. Again, here we would draw up a thesis and the proponents of deregulation, proponents like uh, Michael Beasley and Stephen Glaster, argued that competition in the market, on the road competition, will promote efficiencies. The antithesis, argued by people like Ken Gwilym, Peter Mackey and Chris Nash was that competition will be wasteful and will not guarantee the optimal mix of prices and service levels. The synthesis, again you would need to weigh up your own evidence, but the synthesis may well suggest that there is some evidence of wasteful competition and that deregulated bus markets in Britain and elsewhere have not come up with the optimal mix of price and service levels. Then we'd come to the third section of the anal analysis, that would be ownership. So here you might say that the thesis is privately owned firms are more efficient than public firms. The antithesis may be something such as private firms are dominated by the profit motive and therefore they may not be able to meet social objectives and you may be able to argue that local bus services don't have a purely commercial uh, objective, they also have some social objectives. And then in your synthesis you'd need to weigh up the balance of evidence. I think there is some evidence that private sector firms are efficient in reducing costs, but they're not necessarily efficient in providing uh, the socially necessary services that consumers require. Then we will come to the end of the essay and we'll come to the conclusion. And here, you may have a conclusion that theory might suggest that uh, deregulated, competitive and privately owned uh, and operated bus industry should be efficient. But the practice, particularly in Great Britain, is more nuanced. In the deregulated markets in Great Britain, demand has tended to go down. Uh, and prices have tended to go up quite strongly, even though costs came down and service levels went up. So there's rather nuanced uh, conclusions there. And essentially that might suggest that what one is looking for is something more of a middle way. And of course a possible middle way is competition for the market, sometimes called off-the-road competition, which is the regulatory model that holds in London and also in some continental European cities, such as Copenhagen in Denmark. And what you have here is that private firms are allowed to compete for tenders, so you get the private efficiency in terms of reducing costs. But the overall market is regulated by government, for example, Transport for London in here in the UK. And government is therefore regulating uh, the optimal combination of prices and uh, service levels. So there's a suggested essay structure. I wouldn't really want to see everybody using exactly that structure, but what I'm trying to show to you is a way of having a structured way of thinking about things and then how you can use that fairly simple structure to decompose a quite complicated essay title into its constituent parts answer it and in particular answer it making sure you're covering all the material the question asks for.